thank you for this. And thank you for this opportunity to talk to you today about the research that we're carrying out at the Open University in Astrobiology. What we're offering is actually a step change in the approach that we, have, that we work. We've, delivered, we've developed a collaborative research environment that brings together not just diverse scientists, but also social scientists and educators. Are, are we alone in the universe is probably one of the most captivating questions of our time and is the driving force behind the field of astrobiology. Scientifically, astrobiology covers a range of topics from limits of life to biosignature detection. And this is particularly prudent as we've heard today about the number of habitability and life detection missions that are planned, particularly coming up into 2021 when we have the missions to Mars. And as a science, astrobiology is dependent on a multidisciplinary approach that brings together those traditional um, disciplines, such as geochemistry, microbiology, and mineralogy. The foundations of Astrobiology OU originated through collaboration between early career researchers which, working in these different research backgrounds. The four founding members, myself, Manish Patel, Suzanne Schwenzer, and Vic Pearson, all at the Open University, through financial support from SDFC and UKSA, started to work at the boundaries between these disciplines. And as our research portfolio grew, we started to develop an interest and ask questions about astrobiology and space science, not only from a scientific perspective, but also from an ethical and governance perspective. We carry out a lot of field work overseas, particularly in Africa, and we were conscious of ensuring that we worked with local partners where possible, and that there was a certain level of community engagement. For example, we worked in Ethiopia, as you can see in this picture here on the right, and Dalal, which is deemed one of the most extreme environments on earth. We worked in collaboration with the University of Macaulay, where we ran a series of workshops where we taught teachers about teaching science through astrobiology and their natural environment. We also work with the university in um, Botswana, the University of Boost. In, this, in Botswana, we're studying the salt pans. Here we go out in the field, we collect samples and we analyze data together. So you can see here in the picture at the bottom, here's one of my postdocs working in the labs at the University of Botswana with um, some one of our colleagues. We also became drawn into the governance and commercial applications of astrobiology and how we could look at diversifying our research income. Through our contribution, contributions to a white paper on planetary protection of the outer solar system, we use this to facilitate conversations with um, the space faculty, um, the, the law faculty in our university regarding space governance. And in parallel to this work, Manish Patel, Vic Pearson and Leslie Budd received funding from ESA to look at the social economic implications of the ESA space exploration program. And we also started to think again, as I mentioned, about how we could diversify our, our funding, how we could facilitate the expertise that we developed and the facilities through our research to apply to commercial applications. We started a conversation with Taff Morgan, who's had significant success over the years of using space technologies that have been developed for space um, missions to address global challenges. For example, looking for early detection of Chylobacter and chicken farms, straight through for looking for fungal contamination in avocados. So when Research England re um, re re released a call um, in 2018 for a expanding excellence in England um, call, we felt we were in a strong position to address this um, call. The key criteria were that it needs to be a small, a small group that had the capacity to expand and be able to feed into both the uh, um, economic and social impact. We were lucky to be awarded just under seven million pounds to develop this research group. We were one of 13 other grants that were awarded in the UK, not sorry, England, sorry, ranging from topics from addressing the global plastic crisis in the oceans from the University of Portsmouth, right through to design led research at the University of Lancaster. And the vision of Astrobiology OU is to address not just the scientific, but governance and ethical challenges associated with astrobiology. Now this has um, required a step change in our approach to work, work. And we cross those traditional boundaries, not just within science, but also with social sciences. My team brings together nearly 60, 60 people 
um, both si social scientists and educators from across the university and beyond. We collaborate a lot um, in, um, nationally as well, and you will hear from um, Chris Newman for later today, who was part of our governance work stream from the University of Northumbria. The group itself is underpinned by an ethos of engaged research and has developed both commercial and social enterprises as a means to maximize the impact of our academic and research activities. We, our work consists of five work streams as shown as this diagram that work collaboratively together. The group itself is built on a, a, a strong basis of scientific research, which has been funded over the years from, as I said, STFC and UKSA and Leverhulme. We've expanded the research and the remit of the group by employing postdocs and research fellows with a broad expertise in ranging in disciplines from molecular biology through to organic geochemistry to thermochemical modeling. And the primary aim of this group is to investigate habitability in extreme environments and use that to understand habitability beyond the earth and to identify unique diet signatures that could be used as evidence of life in future upcoming missions. Our primary targets at the moment are focused around Mars and the icy moons, particularly Enceladus and Europa. And to do this, we use a combination of techniques, which includes an, an extensive number of field sites that we've been using as analog environments. And we have the capacity to study these to gain a holistic overview. We look at both the microbiology, the biosignatures, the volatiles that are being released and the geological settings with local partners. And we can combine this with lab-based simulation experiments. We have a suite of facilities at the Open University that can simulate everything from subsurface ocean conditions to the icy moons through to the surface conditions of Mars. And through the Research England funding, funding we're able to invest it just under a quarter of a million pounds in these facilities. We use direct data from space missions, which we're involved with, to model potential habitable environments using chemical modeling, that which we can feed into our lab simulation experiments to ensure that we gain, a, um, you know, that we can really mimic these environments. We, we collaborate a lot. We collaborate both internally to the university and externally, both in the UK and beyond. We have a number of joint studentships and postdocs with institutions in the UK, including Leicester, Essex, Manchester, Northumbria. And we also have funding pre-COVID, this has obviously been a bit hindered, where our early career researchers can go and gain experience working in lab overseas. We're particularly looking at J J JPL and uh, at the moment, and also for international students to come and work in our facilities. Our international development work stream builds on the scientific experts that we have. And it was some evidence from the work that we started that was that we had limited interactions with local communities and researchers of the global north. And we as scientists did not have the capacity to engage with the community to the broader contribution in this particular area. So again, this work stream brings together scientists and social scientists. An example of this is the community engagement project that we have been run with Andre Baradi at the Open University, which is being funded by the UKSA IPP programme. And here we work with partners from commercial enterprises, NGOs, academic institutions, both here in the UK and in Guyana, to develop a novel mosquito breeding site detection and control strategy by using, using a combination of remote sensing, drone surfing, surveying and ground truthing with rover technologies. The concept is that we'll use sprayer domes that can then automatically dispatch to high risk areas to release biocontrol agents that will kill the mosquito larvae, but, but without affecting other species. And to be successful, we're making sure that we co-design this project um, within the indigenous communities. Our governance work stream builds on a, the primarily focused on plant protection. As part of our science work stream, we've been working on looking at me developing methods for industry where we can develop rapid detection protocols for measuring bio burden in clean rooms. We've recently recruited a lecturer in space governance and a number of PhD students in this area, particularly looking at the appropriateness and relevance of the existing Outer Space Treaty and the new UK Space Act to future space endeavours, as the sector itself changes shape and the need for this sustainability increases. 
And in terms of engagements, we, we had pre-COVID planned a number of workshops in UN, in Vienna at Easter on space sustainability, which would have coincided with the local, the legal subcommittee on peaceful out, use of outer space treat, space. And this was going to be an, op an opportunity for a round table showcase of our work and got feedback from, from, from international experts. And this is something we'll hopefully um, develop again after 2021. It would be remiss of us as a research group not to build on the expertise in teaching and education that the OU has. And many of our group provide formal and informal learning. During lockdown, we use this as an opportunity to develop interactives to develop via OpenLearn. OpenLearn is a university free learning platform which is actively used during lockdown. Over millions of people used it and was pointed to by the UK government as a resource. And the idea is that this will feed into a longer course on Mars that will coincide with the launch, um, the landing next year. And also during that time, we use this as an opportunity to work with colleagues at NASA, Blue Marble and Amity University in India to develop an international online astrobiology course that we ran earlier this year. We had nearly a thousand people attend this course from over 52 different countries. And on a local scale, we've been working with, university, uh, with schools in the UK to co-create teaching material for, un for students, with teachers using um, astrobiology as the core, but using it to teach not just STEM, but social science aspects as well. Key to this um, work is delivering continuous personal development in the space sector, both in the UK and in ODA countries. At the moment, we're in a process of carrying out some um, market research to investigate the, the need for the sector. And core to our group is our early career researchers and through training and mentoring, we need to make sure that they have gained the expertise that they need going forward. At a national level, we recently hosted an STS summer school on astrobiology in collaboration with the Astrobiology Society of Britain, where we covered top topics from designing missions to Mars using our virtual mark facility to how to write a CV. They even had the opportunity to talk to a NASA ast astronaut. And finally, our commercialization work stream bin builds on our scientific expertise and skills. This is gonna be the long-term um, sustainability plan of our, our group. We have four pillars, which we do, we're dependent on here is educating, ensuring that our early career researchers are aware of the commercial benefits of research and, you know, and make them aware of, of, of opportunities that they have beyond academia in industry. We also ensure that we have, um, we recently received some funding from SDFC where we've been doing some market research as research to actually find where there are gaps in the sector where we can, we can exploit. And through initiatives that have been funded by UKRI and the U UK government, such as Sprint Innovate UK, we've been able to look at opportunities where we can work with um, um, small SMEs. We also have an opportunity for industrial funded um, studentships and we have our first one starting um, next year. So thank you very much for this opportunity to talk to me. And if you have any questions for me, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Um, sounds very interesting in a growing field. I mean, if you're looking for anybody to um, help you with your research, particularly the authentication of Scotch whisky, um, <laughs> very, very happy to uh, volunteer. I'm sure uh, many of the other members of the audience are in the same category. Uh, we had one question from Adam Narwhal. Um, he said, which uh, white paper on planetary protection of the outer solar system was your centre involved in? Is it available online and what were the recommendations made? So this was um, a project that was led by, um, it was ESA with DLR and Imperial looking at um, how the, the protection regulations regarding um, the outer solar system, which has been published um, and it's been made as a recommendation to cost power. Um, and I can make that readily available. Um, we did it from both an organic and a microbial plant protection um, aspect. So that's something that I'm happy to share. Um, it is available. Okay, no, thanks very much. Um, there, was, there was another question about, um, can you, um, you, you highlighted your international and partnership work. What were your biggest challenges um, in moving that forward, particularly at the moment? I think we've had to redesign the project, basically. Um, it was very much a hands-on. We were all going out in the field to do some work, um, but we've had to re-engage. And what we've done though, we've been quite, um, is actually just use more on our 
our um our partners so we're using we have a lot more people on the ground in the indigenous communities that we've been able to to position them in a to, to carry out the research that we want them to do so it's kind of been we've just had to play on our international partners a lot more and i think that's actually strengthened the work that we've been doing um and they've we you know at the moment it's going it's, it's being successful there to carrying out our surveys in the community and we're also doing the pilot work over over in guiana at the moment as well with with our partners so we've just had to re reevaluate what we were doing and kind of move away move around you know the way that we were developing and and, and um the project yeah i think we've we've had to do very much the same with our projects in the new program with china it's been it's been interesting so that's good um what common misconceptions um, uh, are people to have people have about your work and how do you manage in combating these this is this is a really interesting question um, i think i think people have a preconception of astrobiology about you know looking for, for evidence life but we're kind of taking it to the next level where, where we're looking at all this and i think this is something um, i think astrobiology as a discipline itself has developed a lot over the last 10 to 15 years we've got a lot um, more um, we've, you know, we've had a lot more funding brought into the area. So we've, you know, and our experts are working um, really closely in furthering our understanding. And I think we've been taken more serious by the planetary science community, which is really important. And particularly when we have a number of life detection missions coming up, we need to have that kind of cross-disciplinary um, requirement to, to address some of these key questions. And that is what astrobiology is. It's not, you know, you don't go to university to study undergraduate, in astrobiology it's a combination of expertise bringing together and it's learning learning to talk to each other which has been quite interesting i think that you know the discipline itself is new and emerging but it's an exciting time to be in the field yeah i guess so and i guess that people can now see the uh, the point uh, of yeah. astrobiology much more than they might have done um a while ago so thank you very much karen for your, your talk